conservative MP Genuist completely wipes the floor with the liberal indigenous minister MP Hadju. It is hilarious. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. Allow me to set the scene for you. We're in the Standing Committee on Indigenous and Northern Affairs. And a couple of liberal ministers have been called before this committee to explain many of the problems that are happening with the North, including the grocery bills and the the lack of transparency, the lack of funding, lack of money that is going to Indigenous-owned businesses, which is what the Conservatives are talking to them about, because it's just another example of the mismanagement of the money. Now, the Liberal Minister of Indigenous Affairs, MP Hadju, and the MP from Fort Saskatchewan, Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan, uh, MP Genuis, seem to have some underlying issues with the way each other approaches this question. Now, I'm telling you, these guys, well, MP Genuis <laughs> tears her to pieces. I mean, she runs to the... Um, chair she tries to weave and dodge and not answer her direct question and she turns to her deputy minister she tries everything in her power to get away from this guy and he got two rounds well he got a round and a half and i'm telling you i looked at it a hundred ways and i tried to figure out how to cut it and then i realized now i'm going to talk a couple of times throughout it but for the most part i want you to hear the entire thing because it is a sight to see now i will say that mp hadji was a Minister of Northern Affairs, but her riding is Thunder Bay. And um, MP Genuis is a riding out of Fort Saskatchewan, which is in Alberta. Both have strong um, First Nations representation. Both of those locations have, you know, a good popul- portion of their population is is uh, First Nations and diver- or people who identify as First Nations at least. And so there's a lot at stake for everyone in the room. The other, the liberal ministers are the the one representative from the Northwest Territories, the one representative from the Yukon. Anyway, there, so there's a lot of tension, and there's a, these guys are definitely on the hot seat because again, ten nearly ten years, total mismanagement of the money, hundred million dollars embezzled over here, a hundred million dollars mismanaged over there. I mean, it is. Well, you're going to get enlightened by it here right away. Minister Haidu, it's good to see you again. Uh, You said back in March that the purpose of the Indigenous Business Directory is to demonstrate the Indigenous identity of those on the list. Is that still your position? The Indigenous Business Directory serves as a tool to ensure that Indigenous business have economic opportunities to benefit from Sorry, the Sorry, can you just answer Canada. the question, though? Is the, is, you, you said in March that the purpose is to demonstrate Indigenous identity. Is that is that correct? The list helps ensure that Indigenous businesses have an opportunity to compete uh, for procurement Minister, contracts. Minister, could, could you just answer the question? That's what you said in March. Is, is business, it still true? The business... Uh, the is what you said in March business, still true? The Indigenous uh, Directory is there to ensure that uh, Indigenous business and Indigenous economic development can be furthered by the spend of the Government of Canada. That's um, not the question and not the answer you gave in March. Um, But in any event... um Not even 60 seconds in, right? And there's already that kind of friction between the two of them. So she doesn't want to admit that she messed it all up because she knows that it's going to blow back on her with severe severity, right? Now, I don't believe that she has a chance of winning her seat anyway. I certainly wouldn't vote for any liberal with the way that they've mismanaged not just the money, but the infrastructure and the hospitals and, I mean, everything, right? They just don't seem to have the ability to balance the budget and to put the money where it's supposed to go. And if they do screw it up, they absolutely don't have the ability to take responsibility for it. And so what you're seeing here is, a, is an underlying tension, and it only gets better or worse, depending on which side of the coin you're looking at it from. <laughs> now, the fact that liberal MP Hadju was reading prepared statements and being very frosty and being very abrasive seems to have zero impact on MP Genuous. <laughs> oh, man, he just doesn't let up. Uh, you said in March that the purpose of the directory was to identify 
uh, indigeneity of those on the list. Uh, why was the ArriveCan contractor Dalian Enterprise removed from that list? I don't have specifics, but I will turn to uh, I'd, I'd, li I'd, li I'd like your answer, Minister. We heard well, from the officials on this last week. You, you weren't at OGO. I'd like to hear from you now. Why was ArriveCan contractor Dalian Enterprises removed from the Indigenous business list? Can we assume that it's because they were determined not to be Indigenous, or is there some other reason they were removed from the I list? I can't make assumptions on uh, administrative decisions of the department, but what I can tell you is that um, if circumstances change in ownership structures of businesses, then they very well may be either added to the list or removed from the list. Okay. Uh, is Dalian Enterprises an Indigenous business? <laughs> We don't work with Dalian Enterprises. We don't have contracts with Dalian. I know, but you did. They, they received over $100 million from the government of Canada. They were part of the ArriveCan contract. They were able to get it on the basis of an Indigenous set-aside through a joint venture with a much larger company, even though they're only a two-person company. Again, uh, could you clarify why Dalian Enterprises was removed from the Indigenous business list? Uh... I have, we no longer have Dalian and joint venture companies on the list, and Indigenous Services Canada doesn't have or nor has had any contracts with Dalian. But, but why were they removed from that list? Uh, the officials uh, have indicated they were suspended on March 12th uh, uh, due to questionable factors. Um, and in fact, uh, their suspension was announced on March 1st, so they are no longer on the list. So. I so <laughs> she doesn't have a clue what's going on you know she's talking about how they were removed on march 12th but they were also removed on march 1st and of course we all know that it was the liberals that did that with the arrive scam that this company so not only did the, does this company get the the 60 million for the arrive scam they they were had a, a finger in the pie on the indigenous procurement now, for those of you that might not understand what's going on or what they're arguing about, I will break it down for you briefly. There is a, uh, a bunch of money that is set aside for Indigenous-only businesses. It's been enacted since like 1995, 1996. It's gone through a couple of uh, metamorphosis, like they've changed the name and they've added this much you know, more money. And there seems to be a lot of miscommunication between how and a company is identified as being indigenous. And of course the issue, I mean, I won't go too far into what the solution is, but I can tell you that what's happening is that all of this money is not going into the communities of the first nations at all. Like it's going into the pockets of already wealthy people who are simply utilizing the program and their close relationship with the liberal party, because no matter what the liberal party has, tries to convince you they are, I mean, how does the Liberal Party tell you that the idea for this utopia that they make is between government and business being together as one, and yet they want you to believe that it's the conservatives that have the rich friends? Anyway, that's, uh, that's a video that I'm working on. Now, if I had to guess, I would say that the less that he is intimidated by her, the more she is becoming exasperated and hostile about it. I don't think she's a woman who's used to being called to task on her actions and her behaviors, which seems to be a trend in one half of our government. But he doesn't let up for a second. I'm aware that there's some questionable factors involving Dali, and that's why I'm asking questions about it. Uh, could you clarify, please, if they were uh, suspended or removed on March the 1st, what was the reason they were removed. So I will just reiterate that the purpose of the list no, no, is no. to support... No, 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 Minister, I want you to answer the question. Why were they removed? So I will just reiterate uh, that no, the purpose Minister, of the list... No, Minister, you will answer the question. Why, will they, why were they removed? I have a question for you, Mr. No, that's, uh, there may come a time when that's uh, a possibility, but it's not today. <laughs> Maybe the Deputy Minister can answer uh, if, if the Minister doesn't know. Could, if, if, could no, our Deputy actually, Minister share so, with us uh, uh, Mr. why Chair, they were removed? Mr. Uh, Chair... Point of order, Mr. Chair. I don't know if I'm allowed to do that. It's <laughs> <laughs> happening here, and the, the members asked a question, and we should give the minister an opportunity to, to answer it before jumping into the next question. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to restart the time. Uh, uh, my, my question is simple. Uh, either the minister can answer it, or maybe the deputy minister can answer it. Why was Dalian Enterprises removed from the list? 
<laughs> see her. Oh, Mr. Chair, I have a point of order, which of course is just her trying to say that she wants to tell the point of order that she, or the chair that she doesn't agree with the way things are going. And she's running and hiding and weaving and dodging. She won't let the assistant minister or the deputy minister pick answer the question, even though the deputy minister is the one that has all the answers in front of her. She doesn't want to say out loud that they were removed from the list because of the fraud that they committed on the Canadian population and that the government didn't vet them well enough. She doesn't want to admit that, though we were all aware of it. So I don't know where in her mind she thinks that we already don't know it. I mean, everybody is aware of it. But all she can do is scream for the chair to rescue her, right? Who is a, you know, a, a liberal and he's, uh, well, he doesn't seem very, I mean, when you bring in somebody from the front bench of your own party, and we know that the liberal party is very strict in who can say what, when, and where, obviously the chair is going to be intimidated by the three people at the other end of the, of the thing. You I mean, you want to talk about an imbalance of power, like the far left always talks about that imbalance of power. They should be demonstrating that they understand and are sensitive to that instead of the other way around. However, I digress. Uh, Mr. Chair, through you, I've given an answer to that question, and the list no, no, is no, not permanent no, lists engraved in stone, as the minister, as the member would know. Um, certainly, why, that, why were they removed uh, from certainly the list? that that list is uh, is something that is uh, reviewed uh, uh, as per the request of other departments. The list exists. Let's remind members to ensure that economic okay. development opportunities you, uh, are there for th Indigenous th thank businesses. You, thank you, thank you, Minister. Again, this reference to economic development is completely different from what you said when you appeared in March. Uh, your officials well, testified before the Government Operations Committee uh, last week uh, that they were removed because of reports in the Globe and Mail. Can you confirm that uh, the decision to re remove Dalian from the Indigenous business list was based on things that your department read in the Globe and Mail? That's so through you, Mr. Chair, uh, that member may not think that this is about <laughs> economic development, likely because his party She's has never so focused on economic whining. development for Minister, Indigenous nobody people. Is fooled by this. But that I is asked the purpose a simple, of the clear list. Question. The list is there to make sure that Indigenous Minister, businesses have opportunities to I compete asked a simple, clear question, for contracts. And you're not answering it. There's too much crosstalk that's happening right now. It makes it very difficult for the interpreters to, to do their work. Um, we've, we've had numerous uh, warnings and directives about this, and so I just want to, again, remind members not to, to have this kind of crosstalk. I agree. Um, Could the minister answer the question, and, please? And so with that, I am going to restart it. So there's about a minute left. Thank you, thank you, Chair, and thank you for, to, your, uh, to you for reminding the Minister. Minister, <laughs> it's my time. Very, very simple question here. <laughs> Were your so officials good. correct when they told the Government Operations Committee that the decision to remove Dalian Enterprises from the Indigenous business list was based on reports in the Globe and Mail? Through you, Mr. Chair, the Indigenous uh, uh, business list is an important tool for the government of Canada to meet its procurement targets, something that I will note under the previous Conservative government, uh, they didn't pay any attention to. Thank you, uh, thank, thank, uh, thank you Minister. You sure haven't answered a single question that I've asked in the entirety of these six minutes, but I'll ask you one more. Since you have now established that Dalian isn't an Indigenous company, and since they got over $100 million in contracts from your government under Indigenous set-asides, will you expect a company that was not Indigenous, that got over $100 million in Indigenous set-aside contracts, wow. will you expect them to pay back the money that they received? So. so, Mr. Chair, I think the uh, phrase Indigenous set-asides is a misleading phrase, and I don't expect anything else from Conservatives who uh, have no uh, idea how go. procurement works and no idea what procurement you, targets You know so mean. little it about your file. That, you uh, have not answered a single question that I have asked in six minutes. You haven't even attempted to answer a single question that I've asked in six minutes. And you have nothing but insults is, for Mr. other James, members rather than answers it, about it, your, your disastrous record of Indigenous <laughs> procurement. You should be ashamed of the job you've done. Mr. Janus, your time is up. I'm going to give the minister just an opportunity to <laughs> respond to that one. Well, that member should be ashamed for not Look understanding in that Indigenous mood, business yeah. has had a hard time competing for procurement with the government work. of Canada, and that the work that we're doing to ensure are. that Indigenous business has an opportunity to benefit from the spend of Canada, well, I would say that that's the kind of activity that would be at risk under any Conservative government, and we would see cuts to any kind of approach. Oh, in fact, I would imagine that member would call it too woke. <laughs> Somebody does not handle this kind of stuff well. 
I mean, did you see that she was practically throwing a tantrum? I don't know where she found the temerity to start to put the word cuts in there. This program has existed for a long time. And I don't know where she gets the word woke. He didn't say that at all. He asked her specifically, do you think that the gov- the company that took this $100 million took it from Indigenous First Nations businesses should be paying it back? And I don't know where she went. I think she decided that she was running for office right there and then. I think that she realized that it looked so bad on her that she just tried to speak to her constituents right away. And I can tell you straight now, if, 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 if she was like, I would not vote for this person. And I would simply because I, I can't, I can't, I can appreciate that individuals make mistakes and I can appreciate that sometimes things don't go the way that you want them to. I mean, we can all attest to that. But when you sit around there telling yourself that nothing is your fault and that it's always somebody else's fault and that all you have is this phantom or this boogeyman that's hiding under the bed that's going to come out and make all these cuts. I mean, let's be straightforward. There may necessarily need to be cuts, but it's not going to happen to the Indigenous Procurement Program, which is has literally Indigenous set-asides. So that's what they're called. I mean, she doesn't even realize that they're called uh, indigenous set-asides. I mean, I will leave a link to the document. It's quite large. I can assure you that at, some, at any given time, the language is either Aborigines, like Aboriginal or Indigenous, depending on what part of the document you happen to be reading. And I want everyone to understand that under, the procurement, under this procurement process, it helps First Nations build roads, also builds their houses. I mean, they're not subject to the... Um, buying out the mayors like the liberal government is trying to do in all the major cities. The, these guys have money that comes through this process. And the idea is to put money in the hands of the indigenous workers, let's say, or, or businesses, businesses that are in the neighborhood so that the, if for what, if, say you're building a house, well, the, the people that are benefiting from that are indigenous or first nations and individuals who might be building and then purchasing said dwelling as an example. And of course, as you can well imagine, the liberals have mismanaged it. $100 million went to a, a company that scammed them $60 million for the Arrive Scam app. And you can tell by her reaction, by the way that she's talking, by the level of hostility. I mean, she came out of the gate. It was 60 seconds, and they, was the, they, they were already being hostile toward one another. And, you, you know, that's telling, right? There's no, there's nothing to hide there. There's no There's no attempt to to call it anything other than it is and then if you weren't convinced of that you can see how when he's trying to get a direct question from her all she can say is they're going to make cuts 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 because this was the strategy they decided on when they met when, when they knew that she had to come before this committee they were like okay what am i supposed to say and they're like well just keep talking about the cuts so that we can get you up on tiktok and we can talk about the the conservative cuts but I assure you that if you're in the First Nation, they don't give a crap about any of that. They just want to know how they can stop getting ripped off. And I think that MP Hadju should have had that in focus like MP Genuous did. However, that was round one. And then they got to round four because they were there for two hours. So they went mp Janice, and then they went to around the room and then they there was another conservative they went around the room there was another conservative they went around the room they got to the, to the fourth round and the uh minister who the conservative mp excuse me asked a couple of questions and then passed like four three or four minutes over to <laughs> mp genuous and he picked up right where he left off <laughs> However, by this time, MP Hadju, the indigenous minister, is losing her. You can tell she's visibly twitching in her chair, right? And I have no sympathy for her at all. I mean, if you couldn't handle the, 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 the portfolio, you should never have taken it on. And if you think that you are handling it, then you would have better to say. You would have more to say in your defense instead of reading pre-prepared statements and getting terse with every single solitary person who asks you a question that you can't bully into, into behaving in a way that you deem to be appropriate for your station. <clears throat> Inclusive, far-left totalitarianism is alive and well in the Liberal Party. That's my opinion on that. All right. But now he just, <laughs> he doesn't let up. It's great. <laughs> Minister Haidu, 
My colleague earlier asked about a case involving Canadian healthcare agency. They are a non-Indigenous company, very clearly. They were able, nonetheless, to take advantage of uh, contracts that were supposed to go to Indigenous companies because they entered into a joint venture. Their partner in the joint venture was a one-person company, and that one person happened to be an employee of the company. So they said, hey, let's go into joint venture, joint venture with one of our employees, and therefore we will call ourselves an Indigenous partnership, even though this is a totally non-Indigenous company. Can we at least agree that this is a clear instance of an abuse of the program? Would, would you agree that this is an abuse of the program? I would uh, say that uh, the quote from Philip Ducharme, who's the VP of CCIB, is very important here. And he said, we cannot allow a few bad actors to cause us to move backwards on crucial support mechanisms designed to uplift Minister, Indigenous let me, let me, communities. Minister, let me just jump in, because I've engaged actively with the CCIB, and uh, we've brought them to the Government Operations Committee, and, and I agree that, uh, that the objectives of supporting Indigenous economic development, uh, I, I agree with their objectives. But I want to ask you, the question that I asked you already, which is, do you think this particular case is an instance of a bad apple? Well, they have been rec removed from the um, IBD, and I think that's an important right, but, indication. But, but, they, but, but should, should, but I was this an abuse of the program? I think that's an important indication of uh, exactly uh, why that list is important, because in fact, uh, and why uh, integrity but, matters. Minister, what integrity. Can you imagine the gall it must have taken that woman? to sit there straight faced and use the word integrity while she dodges and weaves and bobs and, and refuses to give a straight answer. And it wasn't just um, to MP Genuous. She did it to the entire conservative panel. Like she just refused to take responsibility. She refused to offer a straight answer. Now they weren't all, there was the other minister was engaged as well, but clearly She's not giving anybody a straight, even when he asked her a straight up question, she had to bring in a quote from somebody else because the far left loves the appeal to authority stuff. They, they try to, to make you think that because they find them impressive, you're going to find them impressive. Well, I think that what's impressive is the ability to give a straight answer to a straight question. Certainly takes a lot of a certain dark trait to be able to look somebody straight in the face like that and, and say the complete opposite of who they are. Integrity. Have you seen any integrity even from this individual in the last... 15 minutes of, of this clip. I certainly have seen none. And what I think is important to understand is you can't just use the word like a buzzword. It's that, those are, I get that that's a tactic that, that many people fall for, but I am not one of them. Integrity is a, it's an embodiment of a behavior of actions. And it takes a lot of integrity to know that you messed it up and admit that you messed it up. However, MP Genuous is having none of it. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's pretty satisfying. Was this an abuse of the program, though? I mean, I, I guess you're saying they were removed, so, so clearly it was an abuse of the program in your view, but, but you, you, you seem unwilling to say yes. Was this an abuse of the program? I would say it was an abuse of uh, being on the list without, okay. Uh, okay. without adequate representation. So should they pay the money back that they received under the Indigenous Procurement Program? Well, I think that um, in in the case of this particular healthcare agency, uh, you know, two things can be true at one time. And the second thing that's true is that we have a nationwide nursing shortage. You may have heard of this. Actually, you do get up and talk about this occasionally. Yeah, um, Minister, you're, uh, you're fact, going. <laughs> Minister, you're, I'm going to jump in because you're going far afield of the question. Uh, see, she tries to bait him. She tries to make him think that he he's going to pick a fight. That she's going to pick a fight with him and, and you know, try to, you know, I don't know what. I think she, in her mind, she probably feels like she's got a good sound bite there by trying to talk about uh, nurses all of a sudden. I mean, we can go to downtown Toronto and see that there's a shortage of nurses. I have no idea why, in her mind, invoking nurses was somehow going to save her from the scrutiny that she's undergoing. I mean, talk about adding fuel to the fire. But she just couldn't help herself because she knows that it's that she's getting, you know, knocked around and so she's using the only tool that she has right is to just be snarky is to say something that she feels is very i gotcha but mp genuous just completely ignores yeah yeah and he, he just keeps talking about the subject which i think is is just spectacular 
he's having none of it. And he's about to really just bring the hammer down on her. And so bad that she has to get the chair to give her protection. And she has to get the chair to give her um, time on her own. <laughs> oh, man. Who votes for these people? Honestly. This is what you get for voting for what a person looks like instead of the caliber of the human being. I just want to say that right now. You, you got to think about what the person knows, not what they look like. Voting is a serious matter that most of the world doesn't get to participate in. What we have here is cultural appropriation leading to financial misappropriation. That is, you have people that are pretending to be indigenous in order to get money that they're not supposed to be accessing. And it is precisely this that has led the AFN to say that a majority of companies, in their view, that are getting these uh, these these uh, opportunities that are established in this in this set aside. A majority of those companies, according to the AFN, are shell companies. So, so do you see the problem here, and do you agree that um, th that your government needs to be accountable for this failure? Oh, good word. What I see clearly is a plan for conservative cuts around oh, a program that actually is about indigenous <laughs> economic development. But I will say this. Minister, could you answer the question? Mr. Chair, could I finish? Oh, so have you, have, have you, have you, let me, sorry, uh, let me, let me ask you this. Mr. Janius, I, I, I paused your time here again, so you've got about 45 seconds left. Um, I think we're all very interested in hearing the answers of the ministers here, so please do give the minister a time to respond to the yeah. question, and I will give you back your 45 seconds, but just with that proviso. Yeah, Chair, let me, let me just ask uh, very, very precisely. If you have an instance of cultural appropriation leading to financial misappropriation, that is someone pretending to be Indigenous, getting on the list, getting money that's supposed to be there for Indigenous communities, should they have to pay back the money that they took? Simple yes or no. Should they have to pay the money back? Yes or no? If a company is found to have breached contract provisions, <laughs> that is an option for departments wow. that have no, utilized no, no, no. that Should company. they have to pay the money back? And yes or no? Say, uh, uh, what I will say yes is or that no? it is clear that the Conservatives want will to get rid of this yes program. Will you say yes or no? This is Should they have to pay the money back? They do not want to do. They do not want to support Indigenous Should they have to pay the money back? Yes or no, and Minister? And we should all be very yes clear no, about the intentions of the Conservative Yes or no, Minister? Yes or no, Minister? Pause this. This is enough of the crosstalk. I'll just give the, the Minister the opportunity to answer this question. We're, we're already over time, but I just want to give her the opportunity to answer yes it. No. Yes or no? If have been breached, then departments have the ability to take appropriate action. Thank, Chair, thank Chair I have a point much. of order I'd, I'd like to raise. Uh, now, there are clearly established rules about the obligations of witnesses at committees to answer questions. Those rules apply to ministers. It's, it's not like in question period where the speaker doesn't enforce uh, uh, rules around the content of the answers. There is a requirement. It is a matter of parliamentary privilege that witnesses have to answer questions that are asked. Now, I've been through two rounds, and the minister hasn't answered a single question that I've asked. And quite specifically, in the last round, I, I've asked a simple question to the minister. So, so I'd like to ask you, um, it doesn't matter if it's a minister or someone else, but to call our witnesses to order and expect them to provide answers to the questions that are being asked. <laughs> I mean, the way that he maintained composure and completely just tore that woman to pieces. I mean, if you vote for that individual, you have to remember that this is the kind of caliber that you're voting for. This is the kind of person who is asked a direct question, and then all she can try to do is talk about cuts, 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 because that's the sound bite the liberals like to use, right? You can hear Freeland using it all the time. You can hear them all. That's the only thing that they have. They, they're just telling themselves that they're just going to go deeper in debt. And if you don't let them go deeper into debt, if you don't make charge a bill that your great-grandchildren are going to be paying back, then somehow the whole country is going to go to, you know, in a handbasket. But the country is fine if you just look after your money. Who wants to live with debt? I mean, the, the, when you have money to spend, it's better than when you have debt. You just ask Alberta, who currently has money to spend and is now investing in hospitals, investing in schools, and investing all of the things that need to be done, without a, and at the same time, paying less income tax. I mean, why would you, the more that these 
liberal and the far left spend, the more they have to take off your paycheck, the more they have to take directly from you, right out of your pocket. They're just reaching right into your bank account. They're saying, let's have all this money for us so that we can waste it and give it to our friends and to not take accountability when somebody calls us out on it. In fact, we're not, we're so, um, against taking accountability that we're just going to simply complete completely and utterly change the subject. Or if at all possible, we're going to ignore you flat out and we're just going to put a wall of, of, of people between you and us. And we're not going to let you even ask us a simple solitary question. I mean, that's the kind of government that you think you should be voting for based on identity. Come on, man. That makes no sense at all. That makes zero sense. There's no way that you're going to be able to get ahead in this world if you're looking at people who are who are not qualified, but you somehow think that you want to support them nonetheless. You have to get tough with these ministers. You have to get tough with these MPs. You have to, you have to ask them the hard questions because life should not be made more difficult by your government. Now, that may be a little bit off of <clears throat> the spectacular... We'll, we'll we'll take a word from the from wrestling and we'll say the spectacular beatdown MP Genuous gave to MP Hedju. I mean, it was it was just great to watch. I know that I enjoyed it, and I think that what we see here in truth, beyond all of the of the hostility between the two of them, is is a woman or an MP who's incapable of answering a basic question about a, about a. A, a, a jacket that she's had for for years and so if she can't answer those basic questions how is she looking after the ministry at all how is she taking care of the ministry in any way shape or form she is does not appear to be qualified to look after this which means somebody gave it to her because she's their friend which is literally the epitome of you know liberal insiders because she's clearly not well versed in her entire ministry. So she likes the title, she likes all the perks, she likes the extra money, but she doesn't seem to want to be too invested or too involved in the actual day-to-day -day workings of said ministry or correcting many of the many of the problems that she claims are were given to her by conservatives 10 years ago. You can't fix it in 10 years. I would say that the first way you're going to try and start to fix it is to pay attention to what's going on in your ministry. I don't know how you think that you're going to fix it if you can't even answer a simple and straightforward question. I don't know how you think you're going to fix it if you can't look a, look a person in the eye and say, okay, that's an issue, we're working on it, or whatever it may be, instead of just trying to say, oh, no, cuts, cuts, cuts. I mean, they weren't even. it wasn't even apropos to the, to the direction of the dialogue. That's just my opinion. You can leave me your opinion down in the comments. I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.